Kyle, a tremendous win. Do those celebrations at the end suggest that you know that that could be a really significant win as well? Yeah, definitely. You can see how much it means to everyone. You know, they're the only team that's beat us this season. So, you know, we really wanted to win today in front of our fans. And, yeah, we know how big this win is for us. So that's how you can see we're, we're so happy. Eddie, was that desire shown in the pressure you put them under, particularly in the last 20? Yeah, I think you could see how much we wanted to win, how bad we wanted it for ourselves, for our fans. So, yeah, we kept pushing and pushing and, you know, thankfully we got the, the breakthrough. But, Carl, you show some character today as well. That's the earliest you've gone behind in the Premier League this season. Yeah, definitely. It wasn't easy, you know. I think it was definitely wasn't our best start to a game. Um, but, yeah, we showed a lot of character. So, I'm happy with how we responded and, yeah, we got the win in the end. And how happy are you, having accepted the challenge pre-match, <laughs> to join that elite group of gentlemen, Freddie Jungberg and Thierry Henry, to score three consecutive times against Manchester United? Yes, I'm happy I accepted the challenge. You know, hello, Freddie, hello, Thierry. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, no, it's, I'm happy. It was a beautiful goal, but how close were you to getting two today? Oh, yeah, I was so close, but, you know, I'm just happy, you know, that, that I got that first one and, yeah, it gave me confidence to keep shooting. I think I had a lot of shots today, so, yeah, next time, hopefully, another one will go in. Eddie, you're already off the mark, but then you had a couple of half chances. Was it a case of just keep knocking on the door for you? Yeah, it's just being alert, being around, you know. You know, when you've got guys that be around you, chances are going <laughs> to fall. So, yeah, obviously, I had one with the left and the swivel keeper save, which... Obviously, it would have been nice to go in, but yeah, I just kept going. I knew that if I was around and alert, you know, the way we're playing, we'll get a chance. And you know, thankfully, I was able to take it. Be honest, how agonising was it when it went to VAR? You know what? <laughs> me and B were speaking because I saw uh, Martinez next to me, so I knew I thought I was on side. But yeah. you know, when you see that that purple screen come up, your heart always <laughs> goes a bit. So now I'm thankful I that it went him. in. He was on side. I, I could see. I could see he was on side. So yeah. That's halfway through the season now. Fifty points. This is Arsenal's best ever start to a season. What's the significance of that? Yeah, that's, that's really significant and it's definitely something we can be, be proud of, but you know, we have to stay humble at the same time because we have, like you said, it's only halfway of the season. Things can change very quickly, but you know, the way we're playing now, if we continue like that, you know, we'll be in a, a good place at the end of the season, so we just have to keep it up. What's behind the way you're playing now? <laughs> many, many things. I can be here for days <laughs> explaining. Give us a few. <laughs> um... Well, yeah, I think, of course, firstly, it's the belief we have, you know, especially when we come to the Emirates, the way our fans are, are supporting us. You know, I say again, we went 1-0 down and you can see the fans cheering for us. You know, they don't understand how much that does for us players. So that's one thing. And, yeah, definitely the, the way the coach is setting us up and the players we've brought in, you know, they've, they've changed us a lot. Fantastic stuff today. Bakari, you were the player of the match. Eddie, you do the honours and hand it over, please. Congrats, mate. Cheers, bro. Thank we you. should actually share this, but <laughs> yeah, no problem. Problem. I'll leave you two to argue. Well done, guys. I'll take the goals, guys. <laughs> 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 you thought he was going to give it to Nketiah for a second, <laughs> yeah. didn't you? But what a performance from that young man. Uh, well, which one? Oh, actually, Saka. <laughs> yeah, well, again, he's, he's come up with a good for Arsenal. Um, and the way he's playing, he's yeah. playing consistently. And I think that it's a good thing now with, um, with Trossard coming in there as well. You know, he's got somebody that if... If need be, he can get a break because I think he's going to need one at some stage because he's, he's going full tilt since he's been in that first team yeah. and his standards are very, very high and he never drops beneath those standards. Yeah. There is clearly momentum here with this Arsenal team and this result merely enhances, you know, that confident nature behind some of these young players. I mean, they are maturing at a great speed right now. Yep. I think you said it there. They're a confident, confident bunch of players. They're playing well and why wouldn't you be? You know, they're going into every game. Uh, expecting to win, expecting yeah. to perform. I actually thought Luke Shaw did okay against mm. Saka for a while, but you give players like that just one little bit of space and they, they can produce pieces of magic like they did, like Marcus did for Man United. But us on a, a real roll now, very early, as mm. we say, halfway through. Manchester City, I think, will have something to say to it, but Arsenal can't do much more than they're doing now. It was that approach in the last 20 minutes that stood out particularly in... Arsenal weren't willing to sit on a 2-2. That look, game was there for them to, to go and grab by the scruff of the neck. Yeah, but look, the, the thing is, is that you're at home and you're, you're at the top of the league. Yeah. You know what it means. You've just seen your rivals bring it back down to, to two points. And so you, you've got to be going for it at that stage of the season. You can't, that stage of the game, you can't be backing off there. You've got to keep them under pressure. The problem United had is that they weren't able to get on the ball and, and, and kind of manage the game and suck Arsenal on and maybe catch Arsenal on the break. That's the problem with United had. They couldn't get Arsenal off them. And um, Arsenal probably recognised that and just kept the pressure on. And in the end, yeah. it paid off. Do you think when Fred came on, 
and they were playing in an almost double pivot, right, with Scott McTominay, just to shore it up, playing for the draw. That's, that almost gave Arsenal a bit more confidence to, confidence to know that, you know, this is an opposition holding on to what they're trying to have right now. Yeah, but you have to remember going to well, especially against a team that are in full confidence, they're flowing, players really thinking they're going to win every single game. It's tough. United did try and plan the counter-attack a little bit, but they never had that real goal threat that you'd expect on the counter. Other, I keep saying other than Marcus. Yeah. I thought Ganacho would have been a bit more of a mm. positive substitute. You go there and win the game and it look, it's a different story. But from an Arsenal point of view, where you're going for the league, winning them games at home against yeah. your rivals is massive. I think it's huge. I don't, look, mm. don't get me right, I don't think United are going for the league anyway. I said that before the game. I think top four, they're settled for. But with the teams getting a bit closer to him. Yeah. Arsenal might get a bit nervous if they lose that game today. Mm. But now their attitude and their confidence is, is, is much higher going through and winning that game. It's, it's the kind of game against the kind of opposition where they, at home, they have to show that they're capable of, of winning and keeping a team like that under pressure. Mm. And, and, and that's what they've done today. It's another little test, because there'll be a load more. It's another little test that you have to say today they've passed. Yeah, let's have a look at the crucial moment. Uh, 90 minutes on the clock. Now, Arsenal, as I mentioned already, were really asking a few questions of the United defence and mm. in the end, the pressure told Ian. It did. Um, it was a good cross here, but that was the one. And Eddie's just in, like, in his room there. That's Eddie in his room. You know, it's like the first, <laughs> it's, it's like the first goal he scored. You know, he's in the place and he, he works very well in there. Like he said, he felt like he was onside because he could see, he was aware of Martinez and he just needs to get something on it. And that is what you want as a striker to see wan Bissaka there just keeping him on. But, like, you, as a striker, you want to be in there and those little touches are what's vitally important and he got it. Because, like he said, De Gea made an unbelievable save to his left foot swivel. That's just enough, that touch there, because he's in the right place. That is a proper... Important. That's one of your goals. Yeah. That's a I proper, love that. Yeah. That's, a, that's, that's a poacher's that finish, yeah. right? Instinct, yeah. Instinct, yeah. Yeah. Being in the right place at the right time, that's what they're doing. I've been so impressed with him since he's come in for Jesus. I think it'd be difficult for Jesus to get in the way he's going. I know you probably disagree. You keep saying Jesus is going to come back in. Mm. Well, this lad's scoring goals. Yeah. And his all-round players improved so much. I think it's... I think well, it's this is why goals. This is what's good about it. This is what I think Arsenal fans wanted to see. We are delighted that um, Jesus can take as much time as he wants to get himself back. But everybody's somebody's come in and actually he is doing it. He's staking a claim. It's like when I got injured in 98, Nicholas Anelka came in and bam, just hit the road mm. running. This is exactly what Eddie's doing. This is why it's important for him to score in these this, games. He could be, that centre forward position could be the difference between both teams today. Mm. If Enketia's playing for United, mm. it could think, be yeah. a to mm. totally different story. Yeah. Seven and seven now for Eddie Enketia in all competitions. Were you ever doubting the fact that he could come up with those kind of numbers when he, for, when he was drafted in? Um, I wasn't expecting those numbers, but I know that he's somebody that in the box, he gets himself in the box and then it's up to him. How he finishes. It's like last week, everyone was saying to me, oh, he soon found out about him because against Tottenham, he had a bad touch. He should have scored with a ball that looped over and he didn't have a good touch with a second chance that he had. I said, this guy is a poacher. This guy, that's his room, where he is, where he works, in the box. And all the goals you see when he's on loan for England under 21s, he's in and around the box scoring goals. I didn't have no problems with him being in there. Whether or not he would take the chances, especially in games like this, was something that he was yet to prove. And now he's proving that he can. I was just going to say, he had to prove himself at this level, didn't he? Yeah. Against the top clubs. Scoring yeah. against Man United, mm. two goals today. Mm. That's massive. That does it. I think we can have a look at Nketiah's first goal, mm -hmm. um, which obviously, you know, got the ball rolling. Welcome back. Half time at the Emirates Stadium. One apiece then between Arsenal and Manchester United. It's been thoroughly entertaining. Both Paul and Ian have been kicking every ball. Well, certainly Ian has anyway. <laughs> uh, let's talk about uh, United's opening goal. Marcus Rashford, terrific strike, Paul. Brilliant goal, yeah. I'm sure Arsenal won't be happy party, especially you'd, you'd expect him to put his foot on this. I can see what he's trying to do. He's played, trying to play Ben White, I think it is him, but from then on, the bit of skill from Marcus, the chop here through party's legs, and then the strike is magnificent. I think we'll see in a minute as well. He, he uses, we'll see better from this angle. He uses Gabriel to block the goalkeeper. But this party, a little disappointed with that. I think he just puts his foot yeah, on that and yeah. the, the, there's no panic, but he, he doesn't. And he's, they've been a little bit like that, Arsenal. They've been a little bit panicky, but from then on, that chop through his legs is brilliant. And then you using Gabriel as, you know, to, to block the goal. <laughs> and the straight, he's got like, a little bit of fade yeah. on it as well. It's a brilliant centre-forward goal. Yeah, it's a brilliant goal. 
Incredibly, that is Marcus Rashford's nine in his last nine games since the World Cup. Good. In fact, when you compare that of... <laughs> good. I'm glad you're agreeing. <laughs> yeah, um, good, but good. the thing is, across Europe's top five leagues, there he is, he's the top scorer yeah. um, since what we saw in, um, in Qatar. A man in form. And you can tell from the way he went about that move and finish. Yeah, he's a man with great confidence. He's going into every game thinking he's going to score a goal. I said before the game, United have to stop Arsenal playing because they will always create chances. Mm. People like Marcus. I think Anthony's been really good as well. Mm. And we, we we saw it there with mm. just half a chance, really. Yeah. It was a great goal. Great. Uh, before we see uh, Eddie and Ketia's equalising goal, there was a warning shot sent from Arsenal, was, was there not? Yeah, but the, the, the reaction from Martinelli is different, um, which we'll see. Um, it's, it's, the instinct... Because I think that he should be getting closer so as he could get in front of Juan Bissaka. And in the end, you look at it, there's a lot of indecision there, but he's not putting him under enough pressure. And if you watch him, he doesn't move at all here with the crosses going in. He's still standing. And that's probably the difference between, um, between him and, and, and um, Eddie Nketiah. Because you see Eddie Nketiah with this. This is, this is a brilliant ball in. Once Arsenal do work it, they work it very, very well in the way that they, kick, they bring the ball over this side and they put it back in the right. They move players out, they play it inside. Good touches, and then once the ball comes out again, I think it's Xhaka that gets in there. Right, here we go, here comes Xhaka. And then you look at Eddie, look at Wan-Bissaka. Bam. That is the difference. Because when you see it from this side, I hope it's not going to be that much of a build-up again because it's sort of got to go for the <laughs> time. But if you look at it, if you keep your eye, if you keep your eye on Eddie, he's getting himself out of his periphery. So, so you can see Wan-Bissaka, now he's there, then he'll do it again. Eddie will just drop off into a place where he can't quite see him, and then he'll have a look for him, right, there it is. So now he thinks, right, there's Eddie, but then he's not, he's, 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 he's taking his eye off of Eddie, he's ball watching and bam. Mm. That's the difference between Eddie and Martinelli because a striker wants to get in front, he wants to attack it, and, you know, he's done it brilliantly. We needed to see that from the corner again because it's, <laughs> you know, it's a coaching insight from a striker. Well, you know, I just thought that they could have just cut it earlier. Just, you know, just yeah. let us, not so long, I had to go through my <laughs> dialogue again, guys. And that, by the way, Eddie Nketiah's eighth goal in all competitions. Yeah. He's the Gunners' top scorer. As well, the say. thing is, what, what I, I was really disappointed for him because I wanted him to score against Spurs. Those are the kind of games that you wanted to score in those big games. But the fact is, scoring against United in a big game, which means so much with City, um, only two points ahead, is going to be brilliant for his confidence. Yeah, and where does this leave us going into the second half? Quite well poised, is it not? Well poised, perfectly poised, I think. I think both teams will be reasonably happy with, yeah. with the way they play. I think United, especially stopping Arsenal, mostly, that's probably the only yeah. chance they've had, I, mm -hmm. I would have thought. And United looked dangerous on the break. I, I think Anthony's looked mm. as lively as, as I've seen him all season, so mm. fingers crossed they can create more chances for goals. It's a game where, it's goals where you feel that both of them feel like, let's just make sure that we don't do anything stupid, we can win this. OK. Well, at times it's been breathless, it's been frantic, and it's certainly been hugely entertaining at the Emirates. نيوكاسل يتعادل مع كريستال بالاس ويسجل رقما قياسيا مدد نيوكاسل يونايتد سجله الخالي من الهزيمة في الدوري الإنجليزي الممتاز لكرة القدم إلى 15 مباراة وهو رقم قياسي للنادي بعد تعادله بدون أهداف مع مضيف كريستال بالاس ليحافظ على شباكه نظيفة للمرة السادسة على التوالي وهو رقم قياسي له أيضا يوم السبت وكانت النتيجة كافية لعودة نيوكاسل إلى المركز الثالث فوق مانشستر يونايتد الذي يحل ضيفا على أرسنال غدا الأحد وسيطر فريق المدرب إي دي هاو على الشوط الأول وأهدر جو جويلين تون فرصتين لكنه لم يستطع العثور على مساحات في دفاع بالاس بعد الاستراحة وكاد بالاس الذي فقد ويلفريد زاها للإصابة في الشوط الثاني أن يخ أن يخطف الفوز عندما أبعد نيك بوب حارس نيوكاسل كرة من جان فيليب ماتيات ماتيتا وكانت النتيجة عادلة ليرفع نيوكاسل رصيده إلى 39 نقطة من 20 مباراة متفوقا بفارق الأهداف على يونايتد وبقي بالاس في المركز 12 وله 24 نقطة